طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, today ان شاء الله we're going to start uh, chapter 3 uh, after we finish the introduction so this chapter talks about data and signals the fundamentals regarding data and signals because this is the uh, 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 the representation of uh, data in the physical layer so uh, so we'll get introduced to what analog signal is what digital signal is what is periodic and non periodic uh, uh, data Uh, uh, and all the properties and theory behind uh, these types of signals. So uh, data can be analog or digital. So the term analog here refers to the fact that the, uh, uh, the data itself takes continuous values. So they take infinite number of values uh, when you draw them. So, so it's something like this. So when you have a signal like this, this is a a typical analog signal, okay? So it takes any value throughout the time, not like predefined value, like for example, this one. This is the definition of a discrete signal because it takes a predefined or subset of values throughout the time and it keeps constant. Or, or if we do like samples, This is also another type of digital signal, which is represented by samples. So again, it takes discrete, uh, uh, it takes value at discrete times. Okay, so either the values are discrete in the amplitude or in the time. Both of them are digital uh, uh, signals. Um, so the signals that we deal with, and, and particularly the, the digital signals, are the ones that we deal with in the, uh, in the physical layer. Of course, we're starting from the physical layer and we'll go up, okay? Uh, so analog data are continuous and they take continuous, they take continuous values, whereas discrete data or discrete signals, they take discrete, which means that they take subset of values. Discrete means they take separate subset of values, okay? Not all types of values. They have like some subset of values that they can take. So signals, uh, uh, analog, sig analog signals can have an infinite number of values, okay, in a range. So even in a small range, it can take any, any value, not like predefined values. In data communication, we commonly use periodic analog signals and non-periodic digital signals. And we'll see, we'll see that in the future. So when we talk about uh, uh, analog signals, we talk mainly about periodic signals. And we'll talk about what periodic means. And we'll talk about what periodic means in a minute. And the reason, the reason for that, as we will study later, is that we can use the periodic analog signal to represent the digital signal. Okay, and this is the uh, Fourier theory which we will talk about later. Okay. So very commonly we, we, we deal in analog, uh, sorry, in physical layer and data communication in general, we deal with periodic analog signals and general type of digital signals, whether analog or, uh, sorry, whether uh, periodic or non-periodic. And we'll talk about the definition of periodic signals and non-periodic signals in a minute. So this is an example of an analog signal, okay, which takes any continuous value throughout the time. And this is, a, this is the, an example of a digital signal which takes like a subset of values throughout the time, okay? Um, so uh, uh, by discrete here, we, we mean either discrete in the value or discrete in the time. So another example of this is what we call discrete signal, which takes values any value, but at discrete time instances, okay? So it's one sample. So at one time, it takes one sample or one value, okay? So it's not, it's not like um, fixed like this one, but both of them, we call them digital signals, okay? And we call them discrete. This one, discrete in the value. This one, discrete in the time, okay? Mafunka? Um, 
So, periodic signals. Periodic signals, periodic analog signals can be classified as simple, simple or composite. And we'll, we'll talk about this. Composite, it's like a complex signal. Composite can be represented by multiple simple, uh, simple uh, signals, as we will see uh, later. A simple periodic analog signal, like a sine wave. A sine wave is a perfect periodic analog signal. It's, uh, it's analog because it takes any value, okay? And it's periodic because it has repetition of the same uh, duration. So uh, in two pi range, you take two pi range or you take a range of time and then it repeats itself throughout the time. So this is how we represent uh, the sine wave. The sine wave is the, is the simplest form of an analog uh, uh, signal which can be a basic ingredient to represent any other composite signal, as we will see. Okay? So, we'll, we need to talk about these definitions when it comes to periodic signals. These are very important uh, uh, definitions that we need to understand and absorb very uh, well. So, uh, uh, this, is the, this is the perfect form of a sine wave. And this is a periodic signal because as we can uh, uh, see here clearly that this duration is repeated, okay? So whenever you have a, a, a duration of time which is repeated, we call this an analog signal. And it doesn't have to take any form within this duration, okay? So uh, 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 it takes any form. The sine wave takes this form, but if it takes any form within this duration, this is a periodic signal. The sine wave is the simplest form of a periodic signal. Okay? Um, so, this is a, a quick exercise or a quick uh, uh, problem about the power at home. Because the power, the power that we have at home is a sine wave. Okay? The AC. The AC uh, power that we use at home is, is a sine wave. And it has some parameters to define this sine wave. And these parameters is either, sorry. So a sine wave can be defined by this amplitude. Okay. So this amplitude is uh, uh, one of the parameters that we can use to uh, characterize or to uh, refer to uh, uh, the sine wave. And when it comes to the power, this amplitude is actually 155 to 170. So the amplitude of the voltage of the EC power at home is in this range, typically. 155 to 170. Actually, this is not the range in Qatar because this is the range for uh, uh, the 110 but the power that we have is actually 2, 220. Um, so in any case, for the uh, 110, if we uh, uh, measure the amplitude, it's actually 155. So why do we refer to it as 110? Well, the, we refer to 110 uh, uh, to the what we call the root mean square value. And the root mean square uh, value is defined by this. So we just need to take the amplitude, so the amplitude equals square root of 2 of the RMS value. Very simple relationship. So, uh, uh, so basically the RMS value is 110. So when, when, when we multiply that by square root of 2, we get 155 to 170. Okay, so, uh, so usually we uh, uh, refer to any sine wave with its amplitude, but practically, in practice, people usually refer to the power itself uh, with the RMS value, not the amplitude. Okay, so when we, when we, uh, when we hear 110, this is the RMS value, it's not the absolute uh, amplitude of the sine wave of the AC power. If, we, if you want to get the actual amplitude, then you multiply by square root of 2. Very simple. Hmm? Wadah? Uh, 
Okay. So, so this is an example. These are two examples of sine waves, okay, which have the same form and the same exact duration, which means that if you, uh, if you look at this duration here, you will find them synchronized. So they have the same period, the same duration when it comes to, which means that they have the same frequency. Okay, so these two sine waves, they have the same frequency. So we distinguish between these two by a, amplitude. by the amplitude. So they have clearly different peak amplitude. Okay, so for example, if we talk about the AC power, uh, uh, in North America versus here, so the amplitudes will be different. One will have 155 and the other one will have layer 220 times square root of 2. Okay. Um, so this is the main parameter where we uh, 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 characterize the, uh, the amplitude of the signal. Another very important parameter is what we call a frequency. The frequency is the uh, repetition, the amount of repetition of this uh, uh, periodic signal. So uh, if, the voltage, if the voltage of a battery is constant, this means that it has a zero frequency, which means that it does not have any duration that repeats itself. It's just constant, so there's no frequency. There is no change. Frequency measures the amount of change. So you have to have a change. And then this change repeats uh, continuously throughout the time. Okay? Um, so, uh, for example, for DC, for DC, we know that we have a constant voltage, right? So for uh, the AA battery, for example, we have a constant voltage of 1.5 volt. And what is the frequency in that case? Zero. Okay? Because it's DC. So, very important property when it comes to frequency. We know that if we have a sine wave and it repeats itself throughout the time, then we measure this duration. This duration is the duration of the period, one period. Okay? This is T. Okay? So, very simply, the frequency is the is the, is the reverse ratio of this T. All right? So the frequency is 1 over the period, as simple as that. Okay? So if you have, uh, uh, if you have a, a, a signal with T equals, uh, for example, 1 over 5 seconds. Okay? 1 over 5 seconds. What is the frequency? 5 hertz. As simple as that. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what uh, what's explained here. So if we have uh, a signal, if we have a signal for one second, it has each duration has one over twelve second. This means that this signal has a a frequency of twelve hertz, which means that in one second it has twelve different durations of these. Because each one is 1 over 12. Okay? So 12 of, the, of these durations constitute 1 second. Right? So the frequency in that case is 12. And the more durations, the more repetitions you have in 1 second, the higher the frequency. Okay? So the more you have of these durations, the higher they, the frequency. So in these two examples, we have two signals which have the same amplitude in that case. They have the same amplitude, but they have a different frequency. So in that case, as you can see, this signal has different frequency from this. Which one has higher frequency? The one, in, uh, the one on the top, right? Because this one has more repetitions and more durations within the same uh, one second uh, period of time. Water? So uh, why, we're, why we're saying this, because again, uh, uh, these are very important parameters and characteristics of a signal. The signal duration, the frequency, the amplitude, all these are very important parameters that will help us later on to estimate and to calculate, for example, what is the bandwidth 
and so on. So uh, all these parameters, they, we will use uh, later on in some equations to, to be able to calculate uh, uh, very important notions and definitions in the, in the network. Okay? So I like to always motivate people why we're learning this. Okay, because some, some, sometimes you have a question in your mind, why is this important? Why we're learning this? This will become very important later when we try to talk about network bandwidth and so on. Okay? Uh, so when it comes to duration and frequency, we have, so, so uh, uh, it's very important here in this chapter in particular to deal with units, to be able to deal with units. And that needs very uh, 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 intensive practice. Uh, don't take it for granted. Okay, so you need to be able to convert from one unit to another uh, uh, confidently. And that requires some practice. Okay, right. so, uh, so when it comes to T or the duration, it's simply uh, uh, represented by second, seconds. And, and of course, uh, if you have millisecond, millisecond is 10 to the power minus 3 second. And microsecond, which is 10 to the power minus 6. And nanosecond, which is 10 to the power minus 9. And picoseconds, which is 10 to the power 8 minus 4. So these units, you need, to, you need to really be familiar with. And you need to memorize and understand how to convert from one to another. Okay? And pay very uh, 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 strong attention to the unit in any problem. Because I see students... In many times, they forget about the unit and they deal with numbers only, and uh, and then at the end they don't put the the proper units and they lose grades because of this. Um, so when it comes to frequency, it's hertz, and as we as we have discussed before, it's actually the the inverse, the inverse ratio of this. Okay. So we also have uh, hertz, which is uh, uh, kilohertz is actually two to the power three. And we have megahertz, and we have gigahertz, and we have terahertz. So tera here corresponds to piku, but it's a, it's a, and the exponent is positive in that case, not negative. What? Okay. All right. So simply, the power we use at home has a frequency of uh, 60 hertz. This means that it has a period of a simply one over 60. Okay. And this is seconds. If you want to put it in milliseconds, then you multiply by 10 to the power 3 and put it in milliseconds. If you want to represent it using uh, uh, microseconds, then you multiply by 10 to the power 6 and then you put the unit as microsecond. Okay? Uh, on the other side, the period of, uh, of a signal is... So the period of one signal is 100 uh, milliseconds. This means 100 milliseconds is, is 100 times 10 to the power minus 3 seconds, which means 0.1 second. So this means that the frequency is, is, the, is the opposite of the, or the reverse of this, or in other words, 10, 10 hertz. Okay? You can stop me. But yeah, the trick here is that you need to be able to confidently deal with, uh, with units and be able to convert between these units uh, fast and efficiently. All right, so <clears throat> frequency is, is the rate of change. So frequency measures the rate of change. And it's very important to, uh, to really understand the definition of this because when you look at the signal, you know that this signal has higher frequency components or lower frequency components. And in data communication, it's very important because dealing with frequency, with high, uh, dealing with signals with higher frequency is sometimes totally different. Okay? Um, so we have, we have signals that go into copper cable. These are usually low frequency signals. When we talk about wireless, we usually talk about very high frequency signals. And the, the characteristics of the signals in different frequency changes. Okay, so it's, it's very important to understand these definitions in order to help us later on to, eat, to appreciate why uh, uh, this signal suffers from certain phenomena because it has higher frequency and in the higher frequency the signal uh, changes its own properties. Okay, type the change in a short span of time, sorry, the change in a short span of time means that the signal 
has higher frequency. The change in a longer period of time means that it has low frequency. If a signal does not change at all, which means that it's, uh, it's constant, okay? So this means that the uh, frequency is zero. If a signal changes instantaneously, interestingly enough, but if, if, uh, if, uh, if a signal has like a, a change like instantaneous, so if a signal has like a, a, a something like this, and the change here is instantaneous. So this is the reverse of constant signal. So if a signal has a, a sudden instantaneous change like this, this means that in the frequency, it has infinite frequency. Okay? And this is very important because sometimes digital signals, they have infinite frequency in theory, but to deal with digital signals, we have to, uh, we have to sometimes yeah, I mean, uh, uh, put some limit into the infinite frequency that we deal with. And we'll see how, how we do that. Uh, another very important uh, parameter of the signal, so we talked so far about per periodic, well, we talked about uh, uh, analog signal, digital signal, right? And then we talked about periodic signal as a type of an analog signal, the simplest form of an analog signal. And in this analog signal, we talked about very important parameters that characterize this analog signal. We talked about amplitude, and we talked about frequency. And now we talk about another very important parameter, which is a, the phase. The phase is the, is the amount of lag that the, this signal has in the time domain. So this, this signal, for example, has a phase of zero because it starts at time zero with am amplitude zero. Okay? If this same signal is shifted in the time domain like this, this means that this signal has a phase shift of 1 over 4 the t, okay? One quarter of the duration. So not only do we uh, uh, need to know about frequency and amplitude, because the amplitude and frequency of the, all these signals is the same. Same amplitude, same frequency. But from here to here, we shifted the signal in the time domain by 1 quarter of t, or here, half t half of the of the duration uh, 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 of the signal, okay? So we call this the phase. And again, phase is one of the very important parameters that we will use later on in data communication, and we will see that by changing the phase, again, the properties of the signal changes drastically, and it affects certain phenomena later on, okay? Um, type. If we, if we need to measure this phase in terms of uh, 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 degrees, we usually call this duration, and instead of using t, we use 2 pi. And we know pi, 3.14, whatever, okay? So we usually call this duration uh, uh, 2 pi, okay? Which means that one quarter of this duration is, a, is 2 pi over 4, and if we need to measure this in terms of degrees, then the 2 pi is actually 360. So 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degrees, which means that this signal is shifted in time by 90 degrees, and this signal is shifted in time by 180 degrees. Okay? Or 2 pi over 4 or 2 pi over 2. Well, so uh, either we... We uh, characterize this, uh, or we represent this duration by uh, time, or by degrees, or by radian. Radian is, is 2 pi radian, okay? So uh, sine wave is offset, is offset, معناه shifted, in the time, by 1 over 6 uh, cycle. This means that it's shifted by... 2 pi over 6, okay? If we represent this by 360, so it's a, it's 360 divided by 6, which is 60. Or if we need to convert this into, so this is 68 degrees, 
the 60 degrees. If we need to convert this to radian, then what we do is that we multiply by 2 pi over 360. So we multiply by 2 pi over 360, and, and then the unit will become radian. So 2 pi is 8 is 2 times 3.14, whatever, divided by 360. And, we, and this will become 1 radian. Okay? Maybe anything that's not clear here? <clears throat> okay. Uh, type. The wavelength. The wavelength is defined as the distance that the signal travels in time. In many ways, students they get confused between the signal and the phase. Uh, sorry, the wavelength and the phase. Wavelength is not a phase. Wavelength is the distance that the signal travels in time uh, uh, for one duration. So when the signal travels in time from the point that it, it has zero value until the end of the duration, then this is what we call a wavelength. So we know that distance is a is uh, uh, the speed times the time. So we know that distance equals to speed times the time. So we know that the time of the signal is is t, right? So what is the speed? The speed is the uh, uh, the speed that the signal takes to travel through the air. Usually, usually, this is the speed of light. The signal travels through the air with the speed of light. Or, in some uh, data communication media, this speed is slightly less than the speed of light. Regardless, we call it the propagation speed. Okay, so we call this the propagation speed. So basically, the wavelength equals to the propagation speed times the t. Okay. So this is the this is the relationship. We know that the wavelength is the propagation speed times the period, and we know that the period is the reverse ratio of the frequency, right? So then, the wavelength. We, this, this is very uh, common uh, equation. This is very common equation. So we know that the wavelength times the frequency equals the speed of light. Okay? Which means that the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency is defined by the propagation speed or, uh, in many cases, the speed of light. So the difference now between the wavelength and the t, remember, t times f is a, is 1, right? But wavelength times frequency is the speed of light, right? So and again, uh, the wavelength is, is, is another parameter that we use in many cases to, uh, 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 again, describe or to characterize the signal. If a signal has very high frequency, this means that it has very low wavelength. Okay, small wavelength. So the higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength. Uh, in many cases, we uh, uh, represent especially the optical signals. Optical signals, we very commonly represent them with the wavelength. Because we know optical signals, they prove purely travel through the fiber optic cable with the speed of light. Okay? <clears throat> so we characterize the optical signals very commonly by the wavelength. <laughs> Type. Uh, so there is the, uh, uh, the converting from the time domain to the frequency domain is uh, a very is also a very important technique that we very commonly use uh, 
to, to be able to deal with the, with the signal in a more simpler way. Sometimes the signal has uh, analog form in the time domain, but when you convert them in the frequency domain, they, 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 represented by, they are represented by one sample in the frequency domain. Okay? So it's easier to deal with this signal in the frequency domain because it has one value only. And dealing with this signal in the frequency domain allows us to understand so many properties about this signal, even if it's composite signal, Sometimes it's much easier to look at the frequency domain and, and try to analyze the signal in the frequency domain. And it becomes much, much simpler to, uh, to analyze the signal in the frequency domain. That's why uh, uh, the, the, the famous uh, scholar uh, Fourier, he actually invented or he actually came up with some uh, representation of signals in the frequency domain. And he came up with that theory which we use until, uh, until today. And it, help, uh, it helps us really to, uh, to be able to analyze and understand many properties about the signal in the frequency domain and it becomes much easier for us. So, so it's very important to know that uh, uh, why, we, why we say that the sine wave is the simplest form of an analog signal? Because Fourier used it to uh, 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 to make it like the basic ingredient to represent any composite signal. So, which means that the sine wave has, of course, its periodic signal, so it has a fixed and constant frequency. We know that, right? And the, it's the simplest form, which means that it can be represented in the frequency domain by just one sample. Because it has one frequency. Okay? So, we know that the peak here is 5 volt. The peak here is 5 volt. Right? And the frequency here, we know that it's 6 hertz. So, it's very simple to represent this in the frequency domain by going into 6 hertz. Because this is a frequency. And it's measured in hertz. So, we can simply go to the 6 hertz and put one sample with a peak value equals to this peak value. And this way we know that uh, uh, in the frequency domain, the sine wave is just one frequency. Okay? So that's, that's, that's why the sine wave is actually the simplest form, because it's, it's represented by one sample in the frequency domain. Now, the, the, the theory behind that Uh, a, complete, a complete sine wave in the time domain can be represented by a single uh, uh, peak in the, uh, in the frequency domain. The frequency domain is more compact and useful when we are dealing with more than one uh, sine wave. So that's what I was saying, that uh, 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 this representation in the frequency domain sometimes allows us to represent very complicated signal, very composite signal in the time domain with some very few values in the, in the frequency domain. So we know that this signal, for example, is very complex in the, in, the, in the time domain. When we convert it to the frequency domain, we find like one or two or three frequencies. So for example, we can design filters, filters to filter this frequency and that's it. So we don't have to deal with all the frequency domain. We just know that this uh, uh, signal is limited in the frequency domain. So this helps us in many ways. So... Uh, So, uh, uh, as I said, Fourier uh, said that we can represent any signal, any composite, any composite signal, whether it's periodic or non-periodic. We can represent it using finite or infinite number of sine waves with different frequencies. Okay? So, for example, we know that we have these three signals. Each of them has different frequency. It's clear that the green signal has double the frequency of the red signal. So we know that the red signal has a frequency uh, of 8 hertz. And this green is 16. 
And of course, this constant signal is zero. And each one has a different amplitude. Of course, this one has 15, this one has 10, and this one has 5. So all these composite signals are represented with simple free uh, 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 samples in the frequency domain. This means what? This means that if we get the summation of these signals, they will look weird for us. They will look composite and complex. But if we look at it in the frequency domain, it's very clean and discrete, and we can deal with them easily in the frequency domain. Okay? So that's what Fourier did. did. So uh, if we get the composite of this signal, it will look weird for us. Uh, actually, for us, it's, it's, it would be very, um, uh, 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 very difficult for us to really recognize that this signal is, is uh, composed of multiple periodic signals. You, you will not be able to tell that. But if you put them in the frequency domain, it becomes very easy for you to understand that this signal is, is equivalent to three composite signals. Okay? So the theory is a single frequency sine wave uh, uh, itself is not useful, but we need it to send a composite signal and a signal made of many simple sine waves. So usually, the signals that we send on uh, uh, the communication media is composite signals, and it can, they can be represented by multiple sine waves. And this way we can understand their frequency properties very easily. So the theory that uh, Fourier came up with was any composite signal, any composite signal, whether it's periodic, non-periodic, whatever, uh, uh, is a combination of simple sine wave, okay, with different frequencies, amplitudes and phases, okay, so uh, with different frequency, amplitude and phase. Remember that. So these three parameters that we have learned about so far can be used in the sine wave to shift them as a phase or to change the amplitude or to change the frequency. And by getting the summation of all these sine waves, we can represent very complex and very composite uh, signals in the time. Okay? Type. He didn't stop at this point. He actually came up with another uh, 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 amendment to this theory. If the composite signal is periodic, which is what we have been dealing with, if the composite signal itself is periodic, the decomposition gives a series of signals with discrete frequency. What does that mean? This means that if I give you a composite signal that looks weird, it looks like this. But then, so this is not a sine wave, clearly. Um, but then from this point to this point, it's one duration, and I repeated that. <coughs> I repeated this duration. This signal is a periodic signal? Yes, it's a periodic signal, right? Because it has repeated durations, right? It's not a simple sine wave. So, this signal can be represented according to, to Fourier. This signal can be represented in the frequency domain by, by samples. And because this is periodic signal, these samples will be discrete samples. Okay? As long as this is a periodic signal, in the frequency domain, it can be represented by, so if this is the frequency, so I know for a fact, because this, is one, this one is periodic, that I can have like one sample here, one sample here, one sample here, one sample here, and so on. <clears throat> okay? If it happens that we have a composite signal that looks like this, and it's not periodic, it's not periodic, can this be represented in the frequency domain by sine wave? According to Fourier, yes. But, but we cannot 
by any means now we represent them using these samples like this. In the frequency domain, it will have like a continuous values, not discrete values like this one. Okay? So if, it's, if the signal is periodic, then we can represent this signal by discrete samples in the frequency domain. <clears throat> okay? Each one will, uh, 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 will, be, will represent a sine wave with different, different frequency, different amplitude, and different phase. Okay? But if this signal is non-periodic signal, then in the frequency domain, the Fourier signal or the frequency domain signal will look continuous also. Because the original signal was not periodic. Form a theory. This, this is very important. In many ways, you will find that we will deal with discrete samples in the frequency domain. In data communication, we, in many ways, we deal with uh, periodic signals in the, in the time domain, which, which are represented by uh, 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 discrete samples in the frequency domain. And this, in fact, helps us uh, more to analyze and to understand the properties of the signal in the frequency domain. So Fourier uh, analysis and Fourier uh, theory is helpful uh, in many ways in data communication. Any question? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the figure that we will show in the next slide shows a periodic signal and its composite signal, uh, which is basically the summation of the three signals that we had before. And it looks, it looks, it looks a, a little bit weird. Uh, so this type of signal is not typical uh, in data communication, but we can consider it to be three alarm uh, systems. In, in practice, we can, we can represent those by like an alarm system that has three different alarms, and then we get uh, an aggregation of this. So we can <clears throat> analyze this composite signal and try to separate them by un if we understand that in the frequency they have discrete values. So in that case, we can get and separate uh, these three alarm uh, signals by just understanding the fact that in the frequency domain they are discrete. So we can get each frequency component and we can separate them from each other very easily. So uh, that's how it's done. So this is, the, this is the signal that we get. So we have a three alarm system and we have a receiver that kind of receives the composite signal from these three alarm systems. So this is the signal that we receive. Okay? So uh, if we want, to, because for each alarm, it's simply a sine wave but with different amplitude or different frequency. Uh, so from this signal, if we don't know Fourier theory, we cannot really understand anything about it. We know that it's periodic because it's repeated. But it's very hard for us to, to be able to analyze the signal and separate this signal into three different signals, which represent the different signal coming from different alarms. Right? It's very, it, we, we don't know how to do it. Using the Fourier theory, we can just, in the frequency domain, we know that this signal has three frequency components at f, 3f, and 9f. And then we can reverse these frequencies because each discrete uh, uh, frequency is nothing but a sine wave. We know that, right? So by understanding this in the frequency domain, we can go back to the time domain and say, okay, so we have a signal of frequency, a sine wave of frequency f, added to another sine wave of frequency 3f, Add it to another sine wave of frequency 9. So we can generate these sine uh, uh, waves in the time domain, and this will represent the three alarms. We can separate them. Um, and of course, to get these samples, we can use filters or whatever. It's not our problem, but in the frequency domain, we know that they are separate, so we can represent these separate frequencies uh, uh, by uh, sine waves uh, using these three different frequency components. Okay, so we call this a decomposition of the signal. So the signal itself is composite 
كومبوزيت سيجنال معناها بالعربي يعني مركبه يعني فور دوز اوف يو مركبه يعني السيجنال نفسها مركبه اتس كومبوزيت سيجنال اتس كومبلكس اوكي سو ذا دي كومبوزيشن از تو تراي تو بريك داون ذيس كومبوزيشن اند ميك ات سيمبل تو ديل وذ باي breaking down the signal into multiple signals each of them is very easy to deal with and in that case the simplest form is the sine wave so we know how to deal with sine waves okay any any questions so far okay hmm? right Oh, this is, this, yeah, I have to get a message. Oh, that's right. Yes. Finally, I, 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 yeah, this is F. You're perfectly right. Oh, that's right. This is very good. Very good observation. So this is frequency. It's not time. And really, by asking questions, I know that everyone is focusing. So please, yeah, I mean, try to interact and ask questions. Uh, <clears throat> so any other uh, questions? So we know Fourier series, we know, or Fourier theory, we know that periodic signals can be represented in the frequency domain by discrete samples. We know that non-periodic signals can be represented by analog signal in the frequency domain or non-discrete signal in the frequency domain. And these, these properties are very important to understand. So what is the... I don't have a feel of the time yet, so please, I mean, so we still have... What is it? 20 minutes more? Okay, good. All right, so we're, we're fine. All right, so, um, so now we go to the other part of the theory, which is uh, uh, non-periodic composite signals. So now the non-periodic composite signal, we need to know how to analyze them in the frequency domain, if the frequency domain may help us or not. We'll see that. Um, so in this case, the composite signal uh, cannot be periodic in nature. And uh, because that implies that we are repeating the same word, or so, so this is an application which we, we yani, uh, the application uh, is, is actually characterized by a microphone or a, or a telephone. And in general, the words that we are saying are not periodic, they are not the same. So we, we say different words, random words. So this cannot be represented by a periodic signal by any means. So in general, the voice signal is non periodic. So in that case, the signal has um, a form that looks like this, okay? And in that case, the frequency representation, in that case, is continuous. So we cannot anymore represent this composite signal because it's non-periodic. We cannot represent it in the frequency domain by discrete sense. And instead, we have to use continuous uh, signal. But the question is, is it still useful to represent it in the frequency domain? It looks like it is. Why? Because at least, at least the, 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 the least that we can learn about this signal is that it has limited frequency. Right? And in fact, our voice has indeed limited frequency. And the maximum frequency of our voice is 4 kilohertz. Okay? So what's after that? It's ultrasound. And if you try to generate a signal with a frequency more than 4 kilohertz, our ears will not, will not hear that. So our, our ears has built-in filter, okay, from 0 to 4 kilohertz. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so the important thing, again, all this information we knew because we converted the voice signal to the frequency domain. So we know now that in the frequency domain, the signal has limited frequency. So at because in the time domain, it has any, no specific shape or form that we can deal with. But when we convert it in the frequency domain, we know that it has a limit of 4 kilohertz. So at least... <clears throat> For example, if we have a voice signal and we need to uh, uh, decode or we need to detect this voice signal from any noise around it, okay, 
we can simply have a filter of from 0 to 4 kilohertz, and any, anything else would be ultrasound, would be noise that we don't deal with, and then we can extract very clean and clear uh, voice signal. This is just an example to motivate you why we still need to analyze a non-periodic signal in the frequency domain. Voila. Okay. <clears throat> what is the bandwidth of this signal? Four kilohertz. It's four kilohertz minus zero. Okay. Either within this frequency, the signal is represented by a discrete sample, which means that the signal is, a, is periodic, or non-discrete samples, which means that the composite signal is, is non-periodic. In both cases, we get the highest frequency, the lowest frequency, we subtract them, and this will be the, the bandwidth, the bandwidth of the signal. And of course, we know, we've heard before about bandwidth, right? <clears throat> And we define bandwidth in 455 and, and stuff. But we defined it in very high layers, in, in higher layers. From the physical layer point of view, the bandwidth is the highest frequency minus the lowest frequency. Okay? So uh, the bandwidth of a composite signal is the difference between the highest and the lowest frequencies. So for example, So that's what we're talking about. So the bandwidth of those, both those two signals okay, is the same. But we know that the signal at the top is a... Is? Is, is discrete? Signal? Yeah, but in the time domain it's a... Periodic, yes. And this signal is non-periodic. Okay? This signal is periodic because it's represented by discrete samples. This signal is non-periodic because it's represented by non-discrete samples. But both of them, they have the same frequency. Okay? So even within the frequency domain, we can understand also that this signal is periodic. We can deal with it differently. Okay? So we can deal with it differently because it, we know that it's periodic. Even though it has the same bandwidth characteristics like another non-periodic signal. But we know that this is periodic, so we can deal with it differently. Okay, any, uh, any questions? All right. <clears throat> so if a periodic signal is decomposed, if a periodic signal is decomposed into five sine waves with frequencies, 100 hertz, 300 hertz, 500 hertz, 700 hertz, and, nine, and 900 hertz. We know that it's periodic, mm. and it can be represented by these five different frequency components. Mm. So what is the bandwidth? Okay. It's simply mm. 900 hertz minus 100 hertz. So it's 800 hertz, all right? So this is the bandwidth. If I change this question to uh, uh, non-periodic, and it starts from 1 hertz until nine, 900 hertz, the answer is the same. Bandwidth is the same. Okay? All right. So this is how the signal looks like. And we know that all the frequency components, they have the same amplitude, which means that the sine wave that, that represents each of these frequency components has the same uh, amplitude. It does not concern us, but this, is the, but this is the case for this problem. Then this is the bandwidth, right? So that's, that's it about bandwidth. So uh, on the other side, we can flip this problem and talk about if we have a periodic signal which starts from a specific uh, uh, frequency, so how can we represent the signal in the frequency domain knowing this information? So it's, a, it's similar to the previous problem, but we start from, in that case, uh, 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 the, it has 20 hertz bandwidth, and the highest frequency is 60. 
So we know that the lowest frequency is a is 40. And the signal can take in the frequency domain any shape or form within these uh, two ranges of frequency. All right? So the, the bandwidth helps us also to understand many uh, characteristics about the signal. So we have uh, frequency highs and we have frequency lows. And in between, because, it's the, because the signal is periodic, we know that we have discrete samples. And we can figure out what the discrete samples uh, look like. So this is how it looks like, because, because we know that it has number of uh, frequency components in the frequency domain. OK? All right. So we'll, uh, we'll stop here.